Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for real people just like you and just like me. Today we have a very special guest with us. Her name is Stephanie Calvert. You may recognize Stephanie from her time with Starship. Uh, Stephanie, how are you? I'm, I'm okay, David, I'm okay. okay. And one of the reasons we have Stephanie on the show tonight is unfortunately she is no longer with Starship. She spent 15 years with Starship. And if you haven't seen Stephanie, do her Las Vegas thing. Ra the, was it Raiding the Rock Vault you were involved with, right? Was, there was a bunch of stuff in Vegas, but that was the biggest thing before yeah. I was like, yeah, before I moved. And you were fantastic. I saw you doing like 25 or 6 to 4 by Chicago. I saw you do, oh. you do probably the most impressive, other than Ann Wilson, your version of Alone. It just, oh. it just, it, I mean, here's, here's a little career advice for you. <laughs> if, if you decide you want to do something, we may need a good heart tribute out there because the sisters, they're not really getting along all that well. And so I, I just, I'm just thinking, oh. you'd it. I'm just thinking you'd be it. And I'm sure there'd be a lot of musicians that would like to jump on board with that. So it's just, <laughs> just a hunch. Something to think about, there something to think about. You know, when I My throw friend. something out there, sometimes, Stephanie, a couple months later, I, I, I read somewhere, and it's like, hey, someone decided Stephanie to Calvert, new yes. heart tribute okay. band. You know, you could, you could call the band, I have a name for the band, but I don't think it would be too catchy. I was thinking calling it like Aorta, but... <laughs> 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 all right. All right. Enough with the horrible corniness here. Yes. So um, I, I was doing a little surfing on YouTube because I do research for my little channel here. And yeah. I was watching Mickey Thomas a couple months ago, New York State Fair, I think it was. And he's he's 71 years old, right? Yes, I believe he's 71. His birthday is December, I think, 3rd. So he'll be either most likely 72. I haven't once he hit 70, we stopped, Stop but running. I'm pretty sure it's like 71, 72. Yeah. Yeah. He, he has gone total, like he's just yeah. let the hair go and which is fine. It, I mean, it's just makes yeah. it even more amazing. I'm like, who is this old guy singing like 1982? I, I, I don't get it. And um, <laughs> I'm always, and I've done a lot of videos about yeah. Starship Mickey because I just can't believe it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like a freak of nature and people will say, yeah. you know, he's got to have some help back there. It's got to be a vocal track or something. I'm going, nope. I don't, I don't think so. I, I don't think nope. so. And you're, that's all him. Yep. And I, that's, I wanted to, I wanted you to just verify that for us since you, you have firsthand knowledge of Mickey Thomas. Yeah. Um, if I was, a, if I was really upset, I would no. Um, abs no, he's absolutely a phenomenon. Like he will come in and be like, cause he suff he has asthma sometimes like seasonal stuff and, or whatever. And he'll come in and he'll be like, <laughs> I don't, you know, my voice just doesn't let me, you know, and then he'll come out and just nail it. Like it's ridiculous. I think in the 15 years that I was with them, I think he only struggled one, like a week. There was one week. Yep. where he had some sort of laryngitis and that was really rough for him in right. 15 in, like in before that I don't think it's ever happened so this was like all new so he's just one of those phenomenon singers that can just sing out, out the rafters no no problem yeah yeah but so anyway I was watching and I just wanted to get that out there for the people that you know in case they were wondering if he was still doing it that way and it was actually yes, him yes. and it wasn't because right now stephanie in this business and you probably know this better than i do is there's a lot of help out there going on and people don't know the help <laughs> is happening you know what or I mean? key changes or key changes yeah, you know? oh, yeah. Well, billy joel said one time and it was a great expression because i'm kind of an old sports guy before i stopped watching most sports but he said um you know, most nights now I have to throw off speed stuff instead of fastballs. And I'm hoping that the audience doesn't really pick up on it. In other words, I'm going to go down here where I would normally have to go up. And yeah. so you see that all over the place, but you know, Mickey Thomas, not so much. So no. 
I'm watching the video and I'm noticing that where I go, that girl doesn't look like Stephanie Calvert. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm saying kind of, kind of same look, like same dress or same, but I'm, I'm going that a little way. bit skinnier than me, a little skinnier than me, but yeah. that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it, the COVID it's- 30. So, so I, look, it's, I wasn't judging. I wasn't saying, wow, she look at her. And then versus you, that wasn't the, the point was it wasn't you, Stephanie. So I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe Stephanie's not feeling well. Uh, maybe she went on vacation for a while. Maybe she's taking a little break, a little family time. I know your husband's a little busy. He's got a job doing, uh, you know, what bass guitar. Does he play bass guitar? Player. Keyboard player. Thank you for, um, the little river band and he's out there. So I'm thinking maybe you guys are just hanging out doing stuff. But then I started looking at other videos and I'm thinking to myself, okay, there's still no Stephanie what's going on here. So then, you know, I, I looked you up on Facebook. I wasn't trying to be a stalker or anything, but I was like, okay. And then I watched this video that you did and I was like, wow. So, um, tell us a little bit about how this kind of went down you can give us, you know, whatever details you want. You could omit things if you feel uncomfortable with that. I don't want to make this all about, you know, negative stuff because I think you're so talented and it's just, my opinion is this is a shame because I've seen you for years just nailing those parts and, and getting out there and just working um, 15 years with a band. You were on, I think you, you had vocals on uh, Loveless Fascination too, which was the mm-hmm. only album they've released over the last know, 30 years. <laughs> so has starship, yes. I know he's yeah. done a few solo things, but yeah, that was the first, that's the only one we've done. And I'm bottom line is we worked, did a show, uh, then we had a long break. And yeah. uh, on that break, I went to a conference in uh, California in Reading at this uh, this church up in Reading that I really like. And there was this big worship leading conference that uh, I went to. And in that process, I, right at the end, it was two weeks and I kind of started getting headaches. Now this is during the fire. So I thought, oh, you know, it's my allergies. I have asthma. And uh, I thought, oh gosh, you know, I must, I must, it must be my allergies. So I get on the plane, I come home and I'm like, this isn't going away. Now I get headaches, but I don't, you know, this one was like consistent. And I said, I'm going to, I'm going to get a COVID test because as soon, I'm not one of those that's like, Oh, I'll just, it's probably nothing. Like with everything that's going on and all the COVID thing that's happening, I, I'm not like, Oh, COVID. I'm like, no, I will go out and get a test. Cause I want to make sure that I'm okay. And right. that if anybody was around me, they'll be okay. Yep. So I, he, uh, my husband came home on Sunday from tour and, you know, I couldn't get a test till Monday. So Monday morning I go in and I get a test and it's positive. And I was like, you know, holy cow. So I'm freaking out. My mom was supposed to leave Tuesday. She had been visiting us. She's 69 and has diabetes and heart stuff. And so I'm like freaking out. I don't want my mom to be sick. So we're panicking. And um, you know, I'm, I'm in bed. I don't feel good. And my phone rings as in the process of trying to figure out, like, I got to call my doctor. I've got to call everybody that I hung out with that I knew their phone number. I even called the school, the church to tell them, you know, Hey, just to let you know, I've got this. Um, and, um, the travel agent calls that books are all of our flights. So it talks to Mickey every day, booking flights for our Shows we had one coming up in a little less than three weeks. Yep. And I pick up the phone and I know it's her because it's on my car ID. And she's like, oh, you sound awful. And I was like, yeah, I know. I just found out I had COVID. I'm just trying to like process that and like get rid of it. I'm just, you know, whatever. We had a nine minute conversation. The reason why I know we had a nine minute conversation was because when all of this went down and he was telling or other his significant other was telling people that I was, didn't tell him, refused, or like never told him I had COVID. I wanted to know, let him know that it took me an hour and 40 minutes on the phone with my phone company to find out exactly what, when she called. Mm -hmm. And she called like literally probably 15 minutes after I found out I had COVID. So 
if I wanted to keep it a secret, I wouldn't have told the one person that he talks to every single day besides his wife. So, um, but I thought with all of this going on and, and all trying to worry about my mom, and I knew we had a few weeks left, I wanted to talk to my doctor to just verify everything because I knew everyone was going to freak out. And so I wanted to get every question that I had answered and just to make sure that, you know, that, that I'm going to be okay or what the process, I've never had COVID. No one in my family has had COVID. Right. So it was crazy. Um, apparently she went and told Nikki that I had COVID. Um, and, it, and then I don't know if they tested me to see how long, but the day I was going to call them after my doctors, they ended up calling me before I got to them. And, and then I, it became like the, <laughs> the scarlet letter girl. I know other people have had COVID in the band and they've worked with them without having them vaccinated and never said anything. We've never had a meeting like, Hey, everyone sit down in order to go forward. We need everyone, you know, it's mandated that we're all vaccinated. We've never even had that conversation. The only conversation we ever had was that we're going to Belgium and how many of you are vaccinated and how many you aren't because they're changing the rules every day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't get one. So that was a discussion on the last concert before all this happened. So Anyway, the process was, you know, he reached out to me. He's like, hey, I heard you, you were sick. And I was like, yeah, Nick, I got COVID. I just talked to my doctor. You know, I get that you guys are all worried if you need to get, you know, if I need to get a sub for the next gig, because it's not in, for another couple of weeks. It, it was about two weeks by then, two weeks in a day. Yeah. Um, I had a couple of subs that I've used in the past. I didn't know that they didn't want to use them again. So I just assumed I'm covered. Two weeks is a long time. Um, but I said, you know, talk to the boys and let me know what you guys want to do and I'll, whatever I need to do, let me know. Yeah. And, and this became a whole conspiracy and that's when it all started. And I think this just was, oh, she's got COVID. Now we have a reason to let her go. Now, I, so I just, the way that it all went down, it felt like this was something that they've maybe been wanting to do for a while. I, I don't know, yeah. but it just all went down in this. He's a very non-confrontational person. I am not. I'm a very confrontational person. Like if you, if something's got to be done, I'm like, let's talk about it. Let's talk it out. Yeah. So, and I know that makes him uncomfortable, but I, it's got to be uncomfortable so that you can get to the core of things. Mm -hmm. You know, I was perfectly willing to do everything that I could. I, if I was, I was like, are you, you know, we had a couple conversations. He's like, I'm going to have her work a whole month. I had a negative test before we even went back out. Yeah. I had a negative test. Yeah. And it just, they found this girl on the side. I knew who she was. I didn't recommend her um, because I didn't think I needed to. Um, yeah. And then they found her through a different, she was in Raiding the Rock Ball as well. Yeah. And, um, and that's kind of how it all went down. And it all just like, now it was like, she's going to be doing the last next month. And I said, Mick, what are you doing? I'm, I'm good. I sent you. Yeah. I said, are you firing me? And he's like, we'll reassess on September 6th. That's like um, over a month. And I said, what do you mean reassess? Is there something that I've done to upset you? Or if there's anything that I can do or that I have done, please talk to me because I'm willing to whatever we can do. I don't, I'm your girl. I said, I'm your girl. 15 yeah. years. You, I've been with you for 15 years. It just really didn't matter. And then, you know, I don't hear from them for a whole month. Wow. And I wrote him a letter because it was the hardest month ever, not knowing. It's like they kept me hanging without any knowledge acknowledgement. And what he did was he wanted to make sure that this girl could do the job and hang with the boys. Um, and that's exactly what he did. And he probably won't admit that, but I've known him for 15 years. Yeah. And so I know how he, I'm not the first person he's fired in 15 years. Yeah. So th the process of it all is he's not good at confrontation and he doesn't like to sit down and discuss things. And it's just the way it is. And he said it was because I'm not vaccinated. Oh, wow. Okay. And well, I said, you, 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 you fly on airplanes mm. for hours, shoulder to shoulder with 5 million strangers. Yeah. who you do not know their vaccination status. You don't know if they are carrying COVID, yeah. but I'm willing to do a test every day. And it just, it was just really, there's a lot to this and it just was really harsh. And yeah. 
fear makes everybody's character kind of come out sometimes. Yeah. <clears throat> well, from what you're telling me here, um, and I was going to ask you, but you are, you kind of yeah. explained it. Um, it almost seemed maybe like they were looking for a reason, you know, mm -hmm. uh, rather mm -hmm. than to, cause you were, you were like, okay, I'll do this. I'll do that. Whatever you want. You know, it's kind of, it reminds me of the time like George Harrison's trying to tell like Paul McCartney, you know, I'll play it any way you want, Paul, you know, and, and, and he, cause he's just like saying, whatever you want, you're Paul McCartney, I'll do whatever you, you, whatever it is you want me to do, I'll do it. And you're like, I've been here for 15 years. Um, yeah. I've seen fan footage of you and I've seen you with the cell phone doing the thing where you hold it up. You're in, you took someone's cell phone and that was just excellent. Cause it shows like you're interactive you're good with people out there. It's like people love that. They they like they think you're a warm, decent person just by seeing you, you know, and just by hearing the way um, you sing and that you're you're like you're pulling down those notes and you're just you're you were just really good at what you did. And and that's I think part of the reason why Starship was able to kind of revive itself because it needed you were kind of like an anchor, the female anchor back there. And I said in the video before, I mean, no one's replacing Grace Slick. Grace Slick can't, rep I mean, it's just, I mean, she's really old now, but I mean, the point is, I mean, you come along, you're filling a role that's very difficult to fill. You're, you're singing the sixties material. You're singing the eighties. You're saying you're doing whatever it is. Yeah. Again, kind of like the George Harrison thing is I'll do whatever it is you need me to do. And right maybe after 15 years, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you, do you have any other suspicions as to? Oh yeah. I, you know, listen, it's 15 years is a long time to hang out with a bunch of dudes, you know, by yourself. I'm with guys all day, a lot of testosterone. Yeah. If I don't get, I'm a drama queen sometimes. Like, I mean, you can probably ask some of my closest friends. I'm an emotional person. Yeah. Um, I'm a very passionate person. I'm Italian. Oh. So, you know, well, I've, <laughs> yeah, I've, 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 my dad's European. My mom's European. I'm first generation. With your hands. You do what yeah. I do. Sometimes. Hey. Hey. Um, but in the, in the long run, yeah, there have been moments where like, if we're exhausted and not haven't eaten all day, I have a really bad digestive disorder, which I almost left the band because I felt like I was a liability. This was years, a few years back. And I was like, look, cause I, I went through a year where I was running off stage, you know, probably five times that year. And I just felt bad because I don't ever want to be a liability. And I don't want people to ever work with me if you don't enjoy my presence and come to find out through all of this, like, old friends of theirs and finding out they've had dinners with them while they talked about me and how I'm this or I'm that, or I'm so this. And they would just talk very negatively about me. And I'm, you know, again, I'm just like, okay, I, maybe not everybody likes me, but I'm not a bad person. Like I've never disrespected them. I'm just, I'm, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I know for a fact that like, if his wife wasn't happy with me, then that's going to be a big thing. I've mm -hmm. never done drugs. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I've never hooked up with anyone on the, in the band ever dated any of them. I mean, like I'm as safe as it gets. I would, you know, I'm very much like, I, I don't know what it is. I'm not a threat to any of the wives. I've never, ever been that way. I very much respect the wives um, of the, of the players. Um, I really cared about them and, um, and you know, but I'm, I can be a pain in the ass. Am I allowed to say that? Sure. Okay. Sure. So, I mean, but we all, we all are like, not everybody's everybody. There's seven on stage. There's one, two, three, seven, no, oh, six personalities on stage, totally different personalities. Mm -hmm. And we're on the stage and we travel together. Our mm -hmm. drummer, travels alone separately, rents his own car, does all that stuff because he's been in it for so long. He knows the process. And when you add a girl, it's a total different dynamic. And, you know, but I held my own. I dealt with the testosterone that was sometimes absolutely inappropriate 
but I mean, I was one of the guys and I hung out and, and I, I really, I'm sure there was something, but if there was, it was never communicated to me. And instead it was like, they would talk about me apparently, um, behind my back. And it's unfortunate because I really, you know, I did, I cared about them, but not everyone's going to like everybody, I suppose. And I don't think I'm a bad person at all. Like I just don't, I love the fans. And that's really why I was there. I was there for the fans because I've been a fan most of my life. So I know what it's like if a band member comes out and says, Hey, it just, it would, it would just like change my whole perspective of the band. And that was important to me. And that's, that's important to me. So that's what I'm going to miss the most is just the, the meeting of the fans and taking pictures and hanging out and having dinners with them. And some of them have become family to me. Wow. Well, that's, and I could, you know, and that's the thing I kind of picked up on right away when I was watching you, you know, I could see somebody who, you know, a lot of you meet people or you talk to people who you've admired or you've listened to, and then they turn out to be a real jerk, you know, you can kind of, you can kind of tell the way they deal with people or they don't want to deal with people. Whereas right. I think you probably felt like, wow, you know, like when you get an opportunity in life, like I'm in Starship, I better make the most of my opportunity. This is a big thing, you know, um, 15 years in this band and they have a history and their music is, it's pretty diverse because of all the different phases they went through. So it's appealing, it's cross-generational. Um, certainly there's a, a huge 80s component to it because that's the peak of their success. And you're up there with mm-hmm. Mickey doing songs like We Built This City. And, you know, people love to see you and him kind of like holding hands in that little thing that you do with um, Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now, which again, it's like with Grace Slick in the old days, that was like, no, 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 no. Grace was not, that was not Grace. <laughs> Grace. Right? Grace was more psychedelic. You know, yeah. I tried in the beginning to kind of be more like that, but I'm like, I didn't do drugs. I'm just kind of like the most straight edge rock person in the world. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I made it more edgy rock and she was more psychedelic and she, you know, cause you can't duplicate what she did. No. There's nobody in this world that can do what she did. Nope. So I kind of had to just hone in and make it my own, you right. know? Right. No, and and that's what I tried to do for 15 years. Yeah. So, but I mean, as far as the accessibility and just yeah. being like fan friendly and a decent yeah. person, that's, you came off that way, you know, and there's, yeah. and I knew that even before I, I met you or would speak with you, I knew I'm like, they found the, I said, they found the right woman for that job. They just did. And, um, you know, and nothing against the new singer. I'm, you know, I'm sure you're, you're not going to wish her ill or anything, but it's just one of those things no. where you didn't have to do this. This The more you talk about this, and now that we know what happened, it was like, if you wanted to make a change, right, and you wanted to have that honest conversation, hey, Stephanie, you know, you've been doing this for 15 years, you know, where maybe it's time to, to, you know, go a different direction or however, you know, those stupid meetings that you have with the boss and the boss is trying to be, you know, diplomatic and they're using all this corporate BS language. So my wife always my wife calls it corporate BS. That's what she always calls it. And, and she's right. She's like you. You didn't have those. She's strong-willed and she, she can pick up, you know, she, she hears people yeah. not talking like normal human beings, you know? Yeah. And so that to me was like, oh, well, it's like the reevaluate. Well, we'll reevaluate. What's that all about? Am I the singer? Am I not the singer? Just, right. you know, I mean, and if it was about the thing that you did do right and then what happened was you contracted it and then you're like okay now i mean i don't even want to get into the immunity and the i've just that's not no, what, what this no. is going to be about but there's a lot of common sense and this is on my channel all the time this common sense just gets thrown out the window for an agenda or for an idea or for we just do it you know there was this tv ad not that long ago, I think it was for Verizon. And they were talking about bundling, like we all bundle and they would all say it together. Well, we all do this. This is why we do it because we all bundle. And I think that's where we are right now. And people aren't listening. They're not hearing common sense. Hey, I did what you wanted me to do. 
I have this other medical issue going on. My doctor says, yeah. no, I can't do this. Okay, so what part of I'm doing everything I can, don't you understand at that point? So I'm thinking, Stephanie, this probably has to do with some something else, most likely. Other, other, I, otherwise, it's just there, there's no common sense. They're not listening. I don't no. know what else it could be. They're pretty, they're pretty, um, I don't know how to explain it. They're pretty gung-ho about getting the thing. And I'm so sorry that I didn't say that earlier. And I'm it's probably, okay. Going to you. okay. It's okay. But, you, didn't, you didn't actually say anything okay. derogatory or negative about it. And I think that's yeah. really where the problem. Comes yeah. In. They're very, they're so, big advocates of that. And I understand, you know, one of the things that uh, one of their friends had messaged me yesterday, actually, she wrote a, a, a not so pleasant comment that should have been probably messaged to me, you know, out of all the good ones, I got one bad one. And that's just the first, I'm sure there's going to be some feed, you know, uh, pushback from, from when things get more serious. I don't know. Um, but you know what it is, what it is. I, all I wanted to do was tell the truth. They wanted me to say that it was a mutual just parting and I'm not going to lie to the fans. Like I'm not going to lie because there's people out there like me mm -hmm. that, can't do the thing right and have been treated like they're garbage and that's kind of what i was treated like and at the end of the day i'm not because i i no matter what personalities we've had i have always been i've always been kind to them i've always been loyal and faithful and i've always gone on that stage and gave a hundred percent if not more every single time. And I've always, always put this band first. Um, I probably might've subbed out three shows in 15 years because of whatever happened, yeah. but I, I'm very dedicated and I've always wanted to make sure that, you know, that, I, that we always stayed relevant. You right. know, that's important to me because I'm part of this group and this group is my family. So I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we're relevant whether it's not my job or not, we, we can all, you know, take part in that. And for me, it was the, it was meeting the fans. That was my, my thing that I did. Um, and so I, but I will say this and if whoever's listening and I'm going to say this because this is the right thing to do. I know that there's a lot of people out there that are saying really, really harsh stuff, whether it's to Mickey or to, the other singer. And I've wrote that on my thing, like not to be harsh to her. I'm not happy with her, the way that she handled it. Cause we were friends and I really wish that she would have reached out to me and, and spoke to me. But at the end of the day, do I want to hurt anybody? No. Do I want to say horrible things about anyone in the band or especially Mickey? No, but the repercussions of treating somebody the way that they did when I know for a fact that I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to say like, go out there and say horrible things about Mickey. I don't, I don't want that. Right. I just, I just want people to know that this is a real issue mm -hmm. and that I'm a human being yeah. and that I'm actually a, I try to be a, a good human being right. all the time. And I try to, to do the best that I can every day and I did try to do the best that I could with Starship. So if there was anything else that, that bothered them about me, um, it would have been much better to be communicated rather than leaving me on a spitfire for a month. And then just after a heartfelt letter, just, you know, throwing me away without even a, you know, thank you for the 15 years. It's been great. You're a great asset. It will never, it was never like that. It was just, just coldly done. Yeah. So it is what it is. Right, right. Well, <laughs> and, you know, um, like I said, uh, certainly, you know, the, the Wilson sisters don't know if they're going to be getting along all that well in the future. I think there's going to be some, I think, I think, you know, I don't know if you're, I, I think you, you mentioned you're kind of a spiritual person. I would say that mm -hmm. God probably has something maybe better for you down the road. I mean, um, you are talented, obviously, um, you definitely, I think are a strong person and I, I can't see how 
somebody's not going to take notice of that. Your husband's in the business as well. So, I mean, yeah. um, people are yeah. obviously going to make connections. And um, I know, I think you've got a second job. Don't you, aren't you into like real estate as well? You, that, <laughs> I got my real estate. Have? Well, I will. I did get my real estate license when COVID hit, when the tours got canceled. Okay. I took my stimulus check because I'm not good at living off the government. It's not That's my thing. Right. Um, and so I took it and I went and got my real estate license to try to get us through the COVID situation yeah. or the thing situation. Um, <laughs> you know, that whole thing, you know, cost a lot of people their jobs. Um, wow. Everyone was out of work. And I was like, I'm going to hit the, you know, we had just got married. We had just moved two months later, we moved to Texas. And then two days later, everything got canceled. It just shut down except for real estate just went crazy. Yeah. So I got my real estate license. I did okay in the beginning, but this is not my heart. That's not my heart. Yeah. And I will do the best that I can to make the money so that we're, you know, Chris is back on the road with little river band. They're doing amazing. You know, they are an amazing band to go see. They sell out a lot. Um, they're in, that's an incredible group of human beings right there. That That is an incredible group of human beings that just a band that's super solid yeah. and they're really, really great with each other. Okay. So it's really nice to, to see that. And, um, and so they're working. And so I, I kind of have to get back now that my job has been changed, but sure. I know, like you said, you know, people leave for a reason. Maybe they need to be out because if this, if these are things that I'm hearing how they felt about me, um, then why would I want to torture them with my presence? Do you know what I mean? If I'm just so difficult to work with, or if I'm so needy is one of the words or whatever it is that they need to use in order to justify, um, yeah. I don't, I don't need to be in people's lives that don't value what I bring. And, um, but this has been, a, I have to take the time to grieve because this has been absolutely devastating to me. Yeah. And I'm very good at not crying right now, okay. but it's been a daily process for me. Yeah. Wow. They, right. they have yeah. to know that I'm a human sure. and that I have a heart yeah. and that if they would have handled it in a totally different way, it still would have hurt, mm -hmm. but I would have respected them at the end of the day. Yeah. And I, and I can, that's what you're saying, obviously, um, is really the core of all this is that maybe it was the way things went down rather than, you know, when you, when you like the way I was surfing and found that, Hey, what happened to Stephanie? She's not there. Nobody's talking about this. You think somebody would mention it. Nobody in the so-called mm -hmm. rock press, rock media has mentioned this. Listen. Um, I, I know this like a starship bias, you know, cause they're, they have the worst song that's ever been made according to Rolling Stone or whoever. So it's kind of like, they don't want to address it. I mean, if you were in, if you were in Jefferson starship, they might've made mention of it, you know, but you're in just plain old starship. So, I, I mean, I don't know. I just like you, I have a lot of biases that I, I pick up on when I do what I do each day and I hear things and I see the way things are written um, yeah. and so I kind of read my own and sometimes I'm way off sometimes, but sometimes I do it for myself, Stephanie, you know, I just, I just do it because, you know, I think like you think a certain way and I think a certain way and we think, well, maybe we're both crazy, right? Maybe we're the only ones that think this way, but at the end of the day, I wanted people to see you and hear you from your heart, talk about what happened okay. this way. You know, the world doesn't just go, huh, wonder if she just like got up into like a, a, you know, she got that spaceship out of here, which a lot of people right now are kind of, no. maybe they're looking for, maybe that's like the, what is that crazy hell bop thing from years ago, people thought was going to take them out of here. And um, it's been a lot of crazy stuff the last 18, 19 months that you couldn't, it even, you couldn't even like, you couldn't, no. no you, could you couldn't write a, you couldn't write a screenplay or a movie. Um, you would just, you, you, people would laugh at you. But um, yeah, I think that's the been the 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 hardest part about all this is thinking that you meant something mm -hmm. and realizing that you didn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. And I um, I think just it was like when I recovered and mm -hmm. they knew I recovered, it was like 
nobody cared that I recovered. It was like they were disappointed. So they couldn't say, I told you so. And that's, oh. it was, <laughs> blew my mind because it was like, aren't you happy that I lived? Like, is, aren't you happy that my mom got through this and, yeah. and beat this? Like if any of them got this, yeah, I would be like, are you okay? Do you need anything? What can I do? I mean, Mickey went through some stuff, had to have back surgery and, and went through some other stuff. And I was like, Hey, is he okay? How did it go? Do yeah. you need anything? What can I do? Is yeah. everything okay? Do I, that's how I, that's how I am. And I get, I'm with a bunch of dudes, so they're not going to be like, Hey girl, but, but to know that recovering from something that they know mm -hmm. and they make sure that everyone knows how serious it is Oh yeah. that, that they don't go, Hey, Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're okay. Let me know if you need anything. We miss you. Blah, 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 blah. It's, it was just like, Oh, we can't have a parade now to say, look what happens when you don't get the thing. Uh, and yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's well, what so, it felt like. Go so, ahead. You no, know, you're going in all the places that I've been going lately with it's, you know, you, you did, you kind of did like a Joe Rogan is what you did. And, and, and when you do a Joe Rogan, people are like, well, I, uh, that's dangerous and it's bad. And, but the outcome is he's good. He's fine. You know, what, what's, why are you people? So it's like, you didn't, again, go back to my Verizon commercial thing. Oh, so you didn't bundle with us. You know, we all right. bundle here at the starship, you know, and you didn't bundle with us, Stephanie. So this is why we're all upset with you. And, you know, if you had just gone along with the lemmings here and done what did what we did, then we wouldn't be so upset with you. We, we wouldn't have hired someone else. See, that's what it sounds like. Uh, and I, I, I hope think that's, go, anyway, I hope that's not what it was, but it might be. And yeah. I'm just here. I'm, Look, first, at the end of the day, if I would have gotten that done, mm -hmm. I'm sure they would have found something else. It really felt like it was more than that. And, yeah. and at the end of the day, using that, this was their key and their ticket to get out. And yeah. I am so sorry for whatever it is that I made them uncomfortable for or whatever. But uh, again, I'm going to say this. And if any one of them are listening, um, please communicate. Just communicate because all of this negative feedback is because the fans cared about me yeah. too. Yeah. I did bring something to the band. They cared about me too because I cared about them. And I cared about the band. And if you have an issue, sit down with people and say, hey, I, this makes me uncomfortable when you do this, or I'd really prefer that you don't do this, or um, this is what we need in order to move forward. And then everybody's on the same page. And then, then this stuff doesn't have to happen. And then you don't treat somebody like this. And at the end of the day, this is why all the fans are upset because of how it was handled. And then, then they want to blame me for saying that I'm trying to, 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 do something negative. And all I'm trying to do is bring awareness to people like mm -hmm. myself who've been treated this way that shouldn't have been treated this way. Yeah. So when was your last gig with Starship? When was the last date? Yeah. The last gig you performed with Starship. Um, the last concert I did, I, it feels like it was in What's the town? Oh my gosh, you're gonna laugh at me and then you're gonna be like, oh, maybe she shouldn't be in social. Um, uh, where, um, what is it? Um, Abraham Lincoln town, what is that? Abraham Was Lincoln it Springfield, Springfield maybe? Springfield? But what- They have like Lincoln town and everything's Abraham Lincoln and they have like this whole like Abraham, I wanna say that. All right, well, let, I was just looking, I wasn't even looking for location. Well, like what, when was, was it uh, August? When was your last? Oh, no, August, September. No, because our, okay. So yeah, it must have been, it was sometime maybe at the end of June or early July, because I went on a two, that two week thing, yeah. came back on the 24th okay. and found out on the 26th that I had it. And so, and then on the 26th, 
because I was gone for two weeks. I hadn't seen them for about, I don't remember how long before that was probably right before I went to California. And then I got it in California from where, who knows. Um, and 26, when I got it on the 26, we had almost three weeks before our next show. So we had like two weeks and like five days before our next show. Mm -hmm. So it was probably at the beginning of July, probably was the last show. Beginning of July was your last show. Yeah. Around there. And you kind of didn't know you were done until what, September, you said? I kind of didn't know what? You kind of didn't know you were out of the band when? Like when, when did you know when you were out? No. So I did a show. The, mm-hmm. the, the, and I remember what we talked about backstage. That was the, the night that we talked about, hey, um, you know, he's like, hey, we need to make sure like who's, uh, who's vaccinated for the Belgium trip. And who isn't there? They're asking us so that we know the rules for the people who aren't. And there were two of us that mm-hmm. weren't yeah. one of one of which had 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 just had COVID not that long before that, okay. um, who didn't get punished <laughs> for some reason. They still went and did shows with um, mm-hmm. he ended up getting the thing. OK, um, but um, but it was that's when they had that. And I was like, I can't. So just to let you know, um, and then that's, that was the only discussion that we had really quickly. And I was like, okay. And, you know, so I, I researched and, and, you know, uh, they would quarantine you before the show and stuff. And I just said, that's fine. I'll do whatever, right. whatever they need. I'll 15, I'll shove 25, you know, Q-tips up my nose. If that's what it takes, I'll do it. I don't yeah. care. Right. Um, you know, if that's going to make everyone feel better, I'll, I'll do that. I'll wear 25 masks. I'll wear a biohazard suit. If that's what it'll take, I can stick a microphone in there. It's not a big deal, but wow. you know, it just happens and it didn't work out. And that was right. my last show. I, I wish I would have known that. I wish I would have known that. Yeah. I wish I would have had a chance to say goodbye to everybody. I wish I would have had a chance to, I don't know, I'm something, sorry. but I didn't. I'm, I'm so. sorry. I, I'm no. watching you and you're just like, I can tell I you just get them. I, I didn't want, I just was curious the length of time between your last show. And then when you found out that you weren't going to be coming back, like how long was that? Uh, I found out a month after my last show. Okay. So I found, was it? No, 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 no. Two months, two months after my last show. So I, did a show. I had the com- the conference, mm-hmm. came back from the conference and got diagnosed with the thing. And then um, they found out a few days later. Um, and then the next show was August 16th, I think. Mm-hmm. So from the 26th, the right. next show was the 16th. So that was almost three weeks away. And so, um, that's, that's when I, but from fired, I found out on September, he told me on September 6th, Mm -hmm. but then he wrote to me on September 6th, as I was salivating over the phone, waiting to hear if I had a life with starship still. Mm -hmm. And he's like, wrote to me and said, Hey, I got your letter last week. Sorry. I've just been really busy. And I just, this isn't you know, I'll take that into consideration or whatever. We're really tired. I'm going to go ahead and call you tomorrow. By the time I get home, I'm going to be really exhausted. So he made me wait another day, Mm -hmm. which is fine. Um, and at, I'm just sat by my phone all afternoon until he waited till probably like four o'clock in the afternoon, my time, which was two o'clock his time. And, um, and then said, you're not going to like what I have to hear. And then he just laid it out. Got it. So from the time the last show was probably about two months of no shows. And then I got fired two months later, whatever. Yeah. So it took a, it took a long time, obviously, to, to get that over with. Um, all right. And to so, get the new. So you're, you're feeling better, obviously, right? You're doing okay now. I, I'm, uh, it's a process. It's an, an emotional process. And now that I've left the video out, there's just, you know, uh, outpouring of love, like seriously, like I have, I'm overwhelmed 
with yeah. how much people have been supporting me. I, like I said, so far, I've only had one person that's very upset who are very close with Mickey and Rachel, which I understand, you know, my friends are going to be on, you know, rooting for me. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they have their situation and I get that. And it's, there's probably going to be more and I just have to emotionally prepare myself for what, what's going to happen. And then eventually this will all blow over and people will either go see them or they won't go see them or they don't care either way. And that's the end of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we are living in the era of the, of the casual fan, as I like to call them. And, you know, they go there, they drink the $14 beer. They're not really that concerned if the band is, you know, who the band is, they, they see a name and they go, oh, yeah, I heard that song on the radio. I'm just going to go, you know, and I've done videos about this, Stephanie. And, it, and you know, I tend to if, if you were bad at this, like if you weren't good in this band, we you and I probably wouldn't be talking because I'd be like, well, she wasn't very good. So maybe they probably replaced her and got someone who was better than her. Right. But then I'm like, why would you get rid of this woman? She's been fantastic for so long. And so that was one of my sort of motivations to try to reach out to you a little bit. But I, I you know, unfortunately, especially with a band like Starship, um, yeah, Mickey is a freak of nature and he's carrying that torch when he can't do it anymore. I, I think that's kind of the end of Starship. It's got, it's kind of has to be. Um, there's, you know, this isn't like Kiss where they're going to bring in new characters and they're going to use voice tracks and holograms and, this is a band you go when you go to see, like go up to Epcot or something and you're hanging out for the dance. Like, hey, Starship is over there. Let's go hang out. And there are a lot of real casual older folks, you know, like my age and probably a bit older who that's their thing. And it's not it's not a knock against you. They just probably see another girl in a dress and they go, oh, that's the person who's going to handle the the gray slick parts, you know. Um, yes, yeah, so there's going to be people like that. And that's OK. I know that. You'd been there though for 15 years. You were you you recorded on the Loveless Fascination album, and and I heard your vocals. It was it, it was great. You did a great job. Um, I think you brought a certain chemistry and a certain authenticity to it. Like it, you weren't reluctantly, you know, holding Mickey's hand or doing the things, the cute things that made the show um, just more likable. You know, because the old starship wasn't at all like that i mean you got to remember uh mickey thomas is a guy who got into this huge brawl with donnie baldwin back in 1989 basically knocked his face off to be gentle about it so that yep. was over with that that's in the history of the band um donnie baldwin ironically is now in the, in the jefferson starship so if hey if jefferson, if they fire their their grace slick you might want to apply for that job because I'm sure you would I know I'll be like hey you need a sub girl yeah I mean you'd be perfect I mean you know everything you know all the parts you could you just step I right do, in I do know the songs I'm, yes. I'm very and familiar with them and 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 weirdly they're doing like um we built this city and everything and that I'm, I'm like eh, that's not Jefferson Starship but everybody's kind of like you guys are going back and doing like White Rabbit and so it's just and this is what I mean by the casual fan. The casual fan is going to go there and go, oh, I kind of know the history of this band a little bit. They had some miracle song in the 70s and in the 80s. You know? so it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's not you, by the way. It's not, when I said that, I didn't mean to make you feel bad, but I've seen people um, just sort of dismiss if the band is even any good anymore. It's not really no, that it. important if who's in the band and so forth. It depends. Like if the guys get so old that they can't perform anymore, then I say you guys should retire and just quit, you know, because it's better than trying to keep the ball rolling when the ball doesn't roll. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. where I'm at now more than ever. But you, like I said, find, find I mean, there's got to be someone out there who would say, put this girl in a heart tribute band and make <laughs> her famous. All right. That's what I would say. Number one. Because you can do it. And anyone who can sing alone like that, yeah, I, I would be the, if I had money, Stephanie, and I could promote you, you know, maybe you're, talk to your husband. I mean, he's got to have a couple of connections out there. I talk to the LRB guys. <laughs> he's they, got an ex wife, man. It's got, he's got an ex wife. He's got to pay that stuff. Oh, you know? crap. Takes I away know. from our million dollar home that we want our dreams to be in. 
All right. that, you know, so close, but no, listen, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm very, very grateful. Thank you for having me on your show. And, yeah. and honestly, like yeah. I, I'm, I get a little choked up, but I'm, I love the, the support that, like I said, and I'm, I'm so grateful for the 15 years that the audiences have loved me through. And, you know, I can always thank Mickey for the opportunity yep. to have been able to be part of that band. And, and all I hope is that, you know, one day he'll, he'll realize that. I don't know if he will, he probably doesn't want to be wrong and no one likes to admit that I suppose, but I, mm -hmm. I hope that for the audience that I made a difference in at least in, in the fans lives. And like, I took them to a place and made them happy for just that hour and a half or hour and 20 minutes as much as I could have. And that's really what was the most important to me was just to make sure that, that they had a good time and, and that I made, I made it an impression or an impression imprint on on their musical souls that's all and um and i hope that i have and with everybody that's responded it feels really good to know that i hope i did at least some of my job yeah a hundred percent i have no yeah. doubt i have no doubt all right so that's our great interview with the lovely talented <laughs> and soon to be even more famous uh stephanie calvert once uh we get we just have to get you with the right promoter, Stephanie, and you're gonna be you're gonna be selling out venues, you're gonna be singing all kinds of songs. I, I just I have a hunch, all right. And if I'm wrong, hey, I'm wrong, but I typically I'm rarely wrong. When I'm wrong, I will admit it though, and I will be the first one to, <laughs> Thank you. to tell anybody. Thank but I well keep I, in touch with me. Absolutely. What we will keep in touch. I sent you a friend request, by the way, over on Facebook. Um, Hold on, let me see. Give me yeah. a second. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, decline. Folks. I'm just kidding. I'll totally, <laughs> I'll totally accept your friendship request. All right. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The super talented Stephanie Calvert. Now you know the, as Paul Harvey used to say, now you know the rest of the story. <laughs>